And as we mentioned before, we focus today on the country's crippled railway network. As commuters are hit with unreliable services to travel to and from work, big business is also having to deal with huge losses. Now, just last week's derailment on Transnet's coal line saw at least 60 wagons lose 6,000 tons of coal. And business editor David Morgan joins us now for more on this. So good morning to you, Devin. I mean, many analysts saying next to ESCOM, our port and rail inefficiencies are one of the economy's biggest threats. Yeah, good morning, Tamela. And you can see why. I mean, these ports are more specifically the rail networks are arteries to our economy. I mean, they take millions of rands worth of raw material to ports. And there are a number of factors that have seen the system on its knees. You've mentioned a few of them. Cable theft, old and outdated infrastructure, including wagons. Uh, remember, there were strikes, there were floods. But perhaps the most concerning of all, Tumela, is sabotage. And I want us to take a quick look at the latest derailment. Now, remember, it happened near Ulundi in KwaZulu in a town. This was last week, Tuesday, and it's on that route, that coal corridor route. There are many corridors taking various types of material to different destinations. But that black line that you see over there is the so-called coal corridor. And this incident happening on Tuesday. What Transnet tells us is that it followed threats from groupings who want a direct slice of the Transnet business. So what Transnet is doing at the moment now is that it's investigating uh, possible sabotage while working with these communities. This was a huge derailment and of course as you said about uh, uh, 6,000 uh, uh, tons of coal derailed there from 60 wagons going off the track. There is suspected sabotage, but Transnet is still investigating that. Now, I mean, Devin, this is quite a huge blow for miners, and no investor wants to see this happening in the country. And I th suppose that's probably the core of the problem, and you're quite right, because what Transnet has done is that it's declared a force majeure, meaning that it frees itself uh, from any obligation to deliver on that contract. And that force majeure you'll see at the moment is a big one, because it's declared six force majeures since July last year, uh, with strikes and floods also leading to some of them. And business does not want to see that, because if you have a big mine opening up, a huge factory opening up, the last thing they want to see is uh, the country's sort of main artery, as I said, to take goods, take raw materials to port, unable to do so. So it has a huge impact on business, but there's more. Now, the Minerals Council, which represents huge, big miners, they've released some staggering figures. First of all, it says um, it lost 50 billion rand alone this year in so-called lost opportunities as a direct result of port and rail inefficiencies. I mean, that's a staggering figure over there. It also gives us a scenario where it says if ports and railways were working in optimum order, get this, uh, the country would have had 27 billion rand more in tax revenue. Now, just think of what that money could do. You're talking about more schools, fixing them up, hospitals, there's municipal infrastructure that needs attention. That 27 billion rand could have went there, but it can't now because of this chronic, persistent problems on the rail line. There's another figure here, 50,000 jobs. It says that if the railway line and the ports were efficient, we could have created at least 50,000 extra jobs. Something has to be done. You started off your preamble saying that possibly after ESCOM, this is one of the country's biggest problems. And uh, you can see why, Tamelo. 